sharing God's word with you today. Um, but before we begin, you need to gather a couple of things. Um, a Bible, pen or pencil, and our class notes, which look like this. You can print those out in the description part of the video. So as you get those things, you can press pause on the video and I'll be waiting. All right, guys, so we recently saw how God fulfilled his promise to give the Israelites the land of Canaan. God was with Joshua, Caleb, and the Israelites as they fought the people in the land and conquered their cities. Then Joshua divided the land for each of the tribes. Which tribe did not receive a portion of the land? There was one that we talked about last week. Levi. The Levites received cities and pasture land, but not a large territory like the other tribes. That's because they were chosen to be God's servants in the tabernacle and to live throughout the land as teachers of the law. The tribes went to the lands they were given. They enjoyed cities that they didn't have to build and fruit from trees that they didn't have to plant. God gave them a fruitful land with everything they needed. They could live in comfortable homes and cities instead of tents like they had in the wilderness. But Joshua warned them to serve God and God alone and to obey his commands, especially now that they were living in their new land. 
would the Israelites continue to obey or disobey? We'll find out in today's lesson. So let's read Joshua 21, 43 through 45. Um, before we begin, we'll pray. And anytime that I mention a Bible verse, you guys can press pause on the video and look, um, look for it. And I'll be waiting until you're ready. So before we begin um, in the book of Joshua, let's say a very quick prayer. Um, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for everyone watching, Lord. I pray that you um, pour special blessings upon them and their family, Lord. We thank you that you're preparing their hearts to understand your word. And we thank you, Lord, that we um, want to know more about you and we want to be like you, Lord, because you are good. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, guys, so in Joshua, big 21 and the little 43 through 45. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it and settled there. The, the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their ancestors. Not one of their enemies would stood them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. Not one of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. So let's look closer. Let's ask questions so we can understand what the Bible, what we just read. So what had the Lord given to Israel in verse 43? Look at verse 43. He gave Israel all the land that he swore to give to their fathers, right? God fulfilled his promises to the fathers of Israel. The fathers of Israel included Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Israel. They all received the promise from God that their descendants would become a great nation and inherit a land. That land was Canaan. What did God give Israel in verse 44? Look at verse 44. He gave them what? Rest on every side victory over their enemies what about verse 45 what does that say about god's promises that he made to israel none of them failed all of them came to pass right so god gave the israelites victory and peace they were living in the promised land so let's answer number one in our class notes. The Israelites lived peacefully in the land all the days of blank and his generation. So all the days of who? Which book in, who were we just reading about? Joshua. So all the days of Joshua, J-O-S-H-U-A. Joshua. So that's going to go, you're going to write Joshua going down. Like. So could the Israelites just relax now that the promised land had been fulfilled? What do you think? Or did God require something else of them? God still required for them to be obedient to his commandments. He had chosen the Israelites as his people and saved them from slavery in Egypt. He wanted his people to worship him alone, to love him and serve him faithfully. He wanted them to obey the Ten Commandments and treat each other with kindness and respect. Let's turn to the book of Judges chapter 2 verse 11 so big two little 11 and let's see if the israelites were faithful and obedient after joshua's death joshua died at age 110 and all his generation that fought to conquer the land also passed away the new generation of israelites were not taught about the miracles of god that he had done for his people they did not know or trust the lord so let's read together in Judges, Judges 2, big 2, 11 through 15. 
Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt and they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Ashtoreths. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So they delivered them into the hands of the plunderers who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were greatly distressed. All right. So what did the, what did the people do in verse 11 that was evil? Look at verse 11. They served who? Baals. Baals or Baals. Um, I've heard that people um, pronounce them differently, so you might hear me say them one of each way. Um, what were the Baals? Does anyone know? Um, Baals refers to false gods. Although the Israelites conquered many people in the land of Canaan, some remained in, the, in certain areas of the land. The Israelites didn't completely destroy the Canaanites like God wanted them to. These Canaanites worshipped many false gods like the Baals and invited the Israelites to worship their gods too. So what else does it say in verses 12 and 13? Let's look at 12 and 13. They, they abandoned the Lord and went after other gods and bowed down to them, provoked the Lord to anger, served the Baals and the Ashtaroth. If you look at your crossword puzzle, you see that image. What is he doing? He's bowing down to an image. See? Statue. Those are the false gods. Um, so did the Israelites obey or disobey God's commands once Joshua was gone. They definitely disobeyed, right? The Israelites were guilty of breaking the Ten Commandments. They served false gods and goddesses of the Canaanites and Baals and Ashtaroth. They put other gods before the Lord and bowed down to idols. They disobeyed the first two commandments. So number two on our class notes, the Israelites soon abandoned the Lord and worshipped what? Or who? False gods. So for number two, I'm going to go across and write false gods. F-A-L-S-E-G-O-D-S. -E what was God's response to Israel's worship of these false gods? Let's look in verse 14. Anger, right? He was angry. How did God punish the Israelites for their disobedience? He gave them over to their enemies. God no longer gave Israel victory over their enemies. Instead, God brought enemy nations against Israel to attack them and plunder them. Plunder means that their enemies stole their food and other possessions. Whenever Israel tried to march against their enemies, God was against them and caused them to lose the battle. They were in terrible distress. So let's read what God would do when the Israelites repented of their disobedience and cried out to him for deliverance. It's in Judges 2.16. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hand of those who plundered them. So, he, who did... God raised up to save the people. He raised up judges, right? These judges weren't like the judges that we have in courtrooms who decide if people are guilty or innocent. 
They were military leaders that God raised up to deliver the Israelites by fighting against their enemies. The judges in the Bible were chosen by God to lead the Israelites to victory. God would be the judge and help him save the people because God was merciful. In the book of Judges, God didn't withhold punishment, but he delivered his people from punishment when they cried out to him for their misery in their misery and in distress. So what we just read in Judges became a cycle that Israel repeated for about 300 years. This is what happened over and over. One, number one, the Israelites worshiped false gods. Number two, God sent enemies to punish them. Number three, the Israelites cried out to God to forgive them. Number four, God raised up a judge to deliver them from their enemies. Number five, the Israelites thanked God for saving them and giving them peace. Once they had peace and rest, the Israelites would forget what God had done for them and turn back to idols. This whole cycle started again and again. So number three for our class notes, God sent who against the people as punishment for their sin? Did he send friends? No, he sent the opposite. Enemies, right? Enemies. So number three, you're going to write enemies coming down. E-N-E-M-I-E-S. So let's turn to Judges 3 and follow along as I read verses 7 through 11. This is an example of the cycle we just discussed. So the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served Baals and Asherahs. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan Rishtaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushan Rishtaim eight years. When the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel who delivered them, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel. He went out to war and the Lord delivered Cushan Rishtaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand and his hand prevailed over Cushan Rishtaim. So the land had rested for 40 years. Then Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. So what evil did the Israelites do in verse 7? They served to Baals and Asheroth. Yeah, remember that the Baals and Asheroth were false gods and goddesses the Canaanite people worshipped? And now the Israelites were worshiping them, too, worshiping them too. What was God's response to their sin? Again, he was angry. What attribute of God means that he cannot sin and he hates all sin? This is a tricky one, but we know that God is holy. And because he's holy, he can be angry and not sin. Because God is just. He must punish sin. It wouldn't be fair for someone to sin and get away with it, right? There should Every time we sin, there should be a consequence, a punishment, because God is, is fair. He's, he's a judge himself. So he loved Israel and wanted them to obey. When they disobeyed, he punished them, not to be mean, but to help them learn that they sinned so that they would turn from the sin and repent. That they, and they would turn to him. But in this account, in Judges, God punished Israel by sending the king of Mesopotamia against them. How long did this king rule over Israel and, and make them serve him? Look at the end of verse 8. We write, eight years. What did people finally do in verse 9? They cried out to the Lord. 
when Israel cried out to the Lord, that means that they prayed and asked for, for forgiveness and help. That was what God was waiting for. So number four, God was merciful and blank to deliver his people when they cried out to him. He was merciful and faithful. Let's see number four. You're going to write faithful number four coming down. F A I T H F U L. Faithful. What did God do next? It's step four in the cycle. He raised up who? A judge, right? A judge or deliverer. The, ju the judge God raised up here was Othniel, who was Caleb's nephew and the son of Caleb's brother, Kenaz. Remember Caleb who spied out the land with Joshua? Caleb remained faithful to God for his whole life, even fighting giants at the age of 85. So number five, God raised up blank to deliver his people. He raised up, Othniel was a what? A judge, right? So um, number five is judges. So you're going to write judges going across number five here. J-U-D-G-E-S. What did Othniel do in verse 10? So get verse 10. He went out to war against the king of Mesopotamia. Othniel, Othniel led the Israelites in battle against this king who had been oppressing the people. And God gave him victory. He defeated the king and led Israel for 40 years of peace and rest before he died. What did the Israelites do again? They did evil and worshipped idols. There they go. Again, back to the cycle. Notice that even though Israel was unfaithful to God, God remained faithful to them. He didn't abandon them, but they came to their but he came to their aid when they cried out to him. He sent another judge to help them. So let's look at number six and eight in our class notes. The Israelites enjoyed blank and rest until they disobeyed God's uh, until they disobeyed God again. So what was what do you think is number six? He gave them they enjoyed peace, right? Peace. P E A C E. The Israelites cycle of disobedience so that blank the Israelite cycle C Y C L E cycle of disobedience continued for about 300 years the first judge God raised up was Caleb's nephew Othniel Othniel so you're gonna write number eight going across here O T H N I E L, Othniel. So, idolatry today. When we read about the cycle that Israelites repeated for so long, we may be tempted to judge them and think that they're terrible sinners. But we have the same sin problem and can be just as stubborn to sin and slow to repent. We may not worship Baals or statues or bow down to idols like the Israelites did, but we can be guilty of idolatry too. Idolatry is putting anything in our lives above God. Whenever we make anything more important than God, it's idolatry, which is disobedience to the first commandment. So today we saw a cycle of disobedience that the Israelite that that Israel repeated for hundreds of years the israelites turned away from god then god would punish them by sending enemies to conquer them and make their lives difficult the people would cry out to god and god would show his mercy by and love by sending a judge to deliver them and their enemies the israelites would have peace usually as long as the judge lived and then they would disobey again what can we learn from this cycle of judges we learn attributes of God, including his holiness and justice to punish sin. 
but also mercy and faithfulness to deliver his people. We learn that idolatry is anything in our lives that we, could, that we put before God. Idols can be different things. It can be our friends. It can be if our friends are more important to us than God. It can be schoolwork or getting good grades if that's more important to us than God. It can be sports if that sport is more important to us than God. It can be money or possessions as was the case of the rich young ruler. Idolatry can be sleep if you're too tired to get out of bed to worship God at church or to read our Bible and pray. It can be clothes, toys, video games, or the latest technology. These things are not bad. In fact, they're blessings from God. But we must be careful not to turn good things into um, things that into things good god things into god things we can't make them our gods and then we can't make them into things that we worship more than god so if you find yourself spending a lot of time doing something or playing something and you're not praying or reading the bible then you want to make sure you give that time to god okay so if one of these areas is a problem for you you can pray and ask god to help you put him First, God may want you to give that give that thing up or may, you may need to change your priorities to make sure that thing you really like doesn't take up all the thoughts, your thoughts and your time. When you ask God for, for forgiveness, he'll forgive you and he'll help you change. So this message goes to me as well. So let's pray together really quick. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this lesson, Lord. And thank you for helping us realize how we are very much like the Israelites, Lord, and how we um, we need to put you first, Lord. And please, Lord, remove any idols in our lives and help us to um, give you the glory that you deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. See you next week.